Recorded live at Tox and Tasting Studios, it's the Clerical Errors Podcast. The podcast that shows you what's behind the collar. Let's go. From the Tox and, Taste, Tox and Tastings Studios, this is the Clerical Errors Podcast. The podcast that shows you what's behind the collar. This is Bullhagen. And this is Vicker. we got a fantastic show, just he and I. You know, we've been trying schedules. It just works out for us to sometimes just throw a quick morning you're right. Episode in, Peter's working, and I know Berg's got a lot of irons in the fire right now. Right. So uh, so it's just uh, he and I, well, uh, Vicar and I, but we'll have Berg on, I think, soon, and then Peter also will be on our next episode, I think. Oh, good. I hope so. so. Uh, it's just a matter of timing, just sneaking in when we can do it, and this is when we can do it. So this is it. So just you and me, one and a half, one and a half pastors, <laughs> again. <laughs> That's cool that we're both three quarters of a pastor added together makes 1.5. Yeah. Yeah. Is that how I, that math works? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> You're halfway there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't think it's how it works, but okay. Uh, you want to argue with your uh, supervisor? No, I know. You know, I put that on a job application one time when I, when I was an engineering student and I was on my third year and I told the told the, uh, the firm that like, hey, you know, that you get a great deal. You can get three quarters of an engineer for half the price. Um, but I was too clever for my own good. I didn't even get an interview. <laughs> so I, I learned to be less clever and more boring on applications after that. Yeah, that's something they want to see is, is snarky. Right, snarky and creative and a, and a free thinker. That's What, what was the job for? You know, I think it was a transportation engineering of some kind, local private firm that worked for the state, I think. All right. They probably already had a, a smart aleck. Yeah, they had they had their quota of smart Alex. They didn't need a, a younger smart Alex to come in and try to be clever. So no, I didn't get that one. So uh, this is what we're going to do. Uh, um, I've give, was given a task um, by uh, someone from the church. We've kind of going through the library at the church, and I, I'm not, you know, me and libraries. <laughs> you can imagine, right? Yeah, yeah. They, they drive I have you not paid a lot of attention to our library, and I, you know, we need to kind of go through our library right. I was told so we've got some books that might be kind of questionable yeah uh can you look through see if we want to to keep these in our library or not and so okay. whenever i get bored i'll just stop and say hey hey let's let's check out a book okay right and we got a box of books that are p- potential rejects from the library and i noticed the library has it looks like they were it was curated up until about 25 years ago and then nothing in there is newer than no that's that's not true actually oh is there newer stuff there, there are newer stuff okay i just looked Lots at the wrong part stuff. Okay, my bad. Yep. Yep. Okay. Up until about, you know, a couple of years ago when our librarian died. Ooh. Okay, so, that part I didn't know about. Yeah. I was trying to make a claim that after you became pastor. And I was here, trying to make you feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, that works. I'm really susceptible to that. That's how you get me to do stuff. <laughs> so how was your day? Oh, so far, so good. That's boring. I want to go through a book. Let's look at a book. I understand. <laughs> I mean, my day was not that remarkable. To be All right, honest. so I'm, I'm kind of, Vicar can vouch, I'm just kind of reaching in. He's blindly reaching into the box. Uh, he's pulled out a yellow book. Um, Spirit Lifting Thoughts for Every Day of the Year, Daily Guideposts from 1992. Oh, the, the year of political correctness. Yes, that was my freshman year of college. Mm-hmm. That was the year of Bill Clinton. Oh. Uh, I don't know it. I, this the, guidepost is kind of one of those things where I should know about, but I know nothing about. Guidepost, isn't that? It's like, like a devotional thing, right? A periodical, and this is right. a compilation of guidepost periodicals, maybe. That could be. Yeah. Uh, all right, that's that's going in the file. That's going away. That one's going away. Is it is it more evangelical than it's not really Lutheran, or is that a Lutheran resource? Do you think? I was excited. I thought it was a football book. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been good, tossing the old animal skin around. <laughs> See, I've been I've been keeping up. You've been keeping up, yeah. yeah. I wonder if uh, Pastor Christensen uh, watched the the Super Bowl. Ooh, yeah, that would be good. Breaking into the culture so he can be more relevant, you know, to his. So, uh, well, just to give it a chance, let me read a paragraph. This is uh, just picking a random. Okay. One of the devotional uh, from Second Timothy one. I thank God when I remember you. Part of my early road, or morning routine includes pouring myself a cup of coffee, wrapping up in my robe, and dashing outside to retrieve the morning paper. Predictably placed oh. at the foot of the front steps. I used to take that place for granted until I got to know our carrier, Janet. 
<laughs> this is this is I'm about to cringe to death over here. I, I can't stand reading stuff like this. <laughs> it's a little dated. I'm not gonna lie. A who wears robes? Yeah. B who reads a newspaper. Right. Yeah. I don't even know what that is anymore. <laughs> who delivers paper? Yeah. Janet, apparently. <laughs> it has her last name. Oh. I'm not saying I don't want poor Janet well, yeah. boxed. We don't want to right give uh, too much. So. Anyways, yeah, that's uh you know, that's not like us where we talk about what we're drinking or something. No. We're, we do it way better I, I, I've, no, I've noticed, like, I didn't look carefully, but you noticed that there is a strange relationship with yeah. with beverages and coffee and devotion. And right. The covers of several like, of them. That's so silly as we drink our beverages. Right. In the talking and tasting <laughs> studio. Right. <laughs> People listening to us while they throw their robe on and go outside to talk to Janet. Right. In the crisp morning air, you know. <laughs> Not like walk outside in their underwear, <laughs> like, which is probably more realistic. <laughs> uh, so I got, I do have a Coke here. Oh yeah, I think the we you are not pickle creative. Jar? Yeah, my <laughs> my pickle jar. This is that concoction I make at home out of iced tea and Crystal Light in a uh, recycled G Zero bottle. So, no. so uh, before we get, let's do one more book before you yeah, get to yeah. the text. All right, let's see. Grabbing through the randomly picking, I I. I I'm the witness that he's not looking. He's reaching blindly into the box of books. And here it is. Uh, bouncing back. Bouncing back. Is this like post backsliding? Like, I don't know. Oh, okay. Um, handling the humor and heartaches of frustration. Hmm. The humor of frustration. Right. I mean, I would think that you'd want to develop a sense of humor for frustrating situations rather than handle it and try to get rid of it, I guess. Or maybe I'm not sure how to take that sentence, I guess. Um, I'm not, uh, let's see the rating, this manuscript, these three friends encouraged me again and again to bounce back. Hmm. The dedication is an appreciation for the, of the iron they have used to sharpen my sometimes dull edge. And for the hours of listening, they have given Guys, I love you. Whoa. Uh. Oh. <laughs> Can you, are you opening to a random page to find a sample devotional? Are, are they kind of broke up by days or more All like right. a chapter book? All right. Let's see here. Uh, there's one on adult adolescence. Was the insightful Ecclesiastes preacher prophetic? Or was he in midlife crisis as a big deal of his day, as his day as in ours? Yeah. Yesterday, modest exercise program in my body. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, you gave it your best oh. shot. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I didn't want you losing your breakfast all over the keyboard there, so maybe it was a good time to to, to break from that. Right. But. Well, you know, it's a, I was I was ad, was hopeful because right. It was adult adolescent, and that's kind of how I view myself, or at least right. my wife does. Right. I mean, but now that's institutionalized. Now, like, the entire generation of young people think they're never going to grow up or right. whatever. So. <laughs> that's right. As uh, who, who was it? Uh, was it Rodney Dangerfield who said uh, marriage is a fine institution, but who wants to live in an institution? <laughs> I don't know who said that, but I'll take your word for it. Uh, let's talk about the text. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, the text? Oh, wait. I... Oh. oh. So, let's talk about the text. Okay. <laughs> uh, but this is the wrong text. Oh, my. <laughs> like, I think you knocked it on the floor there. No? Oh, do I have it? Well, we're off to a good start. Quin- there we go. Quinn Quagesima. Or... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, a little technical difficulties. If there's a little, somehow I uh, <laughs> I hit a mute button. <laughs> we we think we paused ourselves and uh, anyway. So. Right. So uh, Peter will put this together. If we wind up repeating ourselves or something. Right. You'll just ha- we'll just need a little extra grace. Maybe we could borrow something right. from Saint Mary or something. Right. All right. The Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke, chapter eighteen. Taking the twelve, Jesus said to them, "See, we are going up to Jerusalem." And everything that is written about the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished. 
for he will be delivered over to the Gentiles, and will be mocked, and shamefully treated, and spit upon. And after flogging him, they will kill him, and on the third day he will rise. But they understood none of these things. The saying was hidden from them, and they did not grasp what was said. As he drew near to Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging, and hearing a crowd going by, he inquired what this meant. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is going by. And he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And those who were in front rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he came near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Recover your sight, your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight, and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. Now, there are two, uh, really, almost two separate accounts here. Right. But I think there's a reason why they're put together. And I think there's a reason why Luke put, Luke put them together. Okay. And uh, you might already know because you've already heard this before. <laughs> <laughs> I might we have just, heard this. We just happen to not be recording at the time. That's okay. I need to hear it twice. That's the way vicars are. So uh, so the first, the first part of it is the disciples uh, not understanding the 12. They did not understand, as Jesus explains, how he had to... Uh, be delivered over to the Gentiles, be mocked, shamefully treated, and spit upon. And after flogging him, they will kill him. And on the third day, he will rise. But they did not understand. They understood none of these things. Right. Even though that sounds pretty clear, what he was saying. Right. I mean, what's not to understand? Right. They, they must have thought it was a parable or something like that. They, they did not want to trust the clear words of Jesus. Right. They did not understand because they probably didn't understand why. If they understood him to be God, why would God do that? Right. They they understood that the powers that would put him be put him to death are certainly not as powerful as right. Jesus. They had seen him defy death several times by then, and they they didn't understand wh- how that can bring salvation. Right. All those things they just did not understand. Mm-hmm. But that's the point. What's not to understand if Jesus said so? If God's word says, you know, just like we don't understand how it is that an infant can have faith. Right. But God's word says, let the children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belong the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Okay, what about the Lord's Supper? Would you be able to understand and explain how it is that Christ's body and blood is given for you? No, not with worldly tools, like not with magnifying glasses or genetic engineering or any of that stuff. And which is, by the way, the reason why those who reject the real presence of Christ, they do so on the basis of, well, we don't understand how that could be. If Jesus himself ascended into heaven, how could he be both ascended into heaven right. and then offered in the Lord's Supper? We don't understand. Well, what's there to understand? This is what Jesus said, just like to the disciples. This is what Jesus, and not only Jesus, the whole Old Testament fulfilling what the prophets said, Jesus explains. What's there to understand? Jesus said so. The Word of God said so. Moses and Elijah on Mount Transfiguration, talking to Jesus about his departure, explained this. Peter, James, and John heard the voice of God. This is uh, my beloved son. son. Listen to him. Right. So what's there to understand if, if he have the Word and promise of God? Yeah, I think people are pretty good at not understanding things when they don't like the clear words. Then they decide, and I don't know if they decide or not, but they don't understand, and it's also because they don't like the words. Right, right. That's I don't understand. Well, what, what does it say? Okay, then. <laughs> right. Right? Yeah. Even in this way, you know, that that's the beauty of, of Lutheran theology and, and our sacramental understanding is, is when someone says, thinks to themselves, I don't understand how it is that I can be forgiven. Yeah. I don't understand how it is that I can know that I'm a child of God. Right. Well, what does Jesus say? What's there not to understand? Right. When he forgives you your sins, 
that is a clear word of God. What's not to understand about that? Right. You can argue, but that you know, but you just trust in the word of God and what it says, rather than leaning on your own right. understanding. And that was the rub. And then Luke, in our text, transitions from that to a blind man uh, along the road who heard the crowd uh, and inquired what the crowd was, what the hubbub was about. Yeah, what's, what's the... And they, they told him Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And then he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, there's lots of things that perhaps he, the crowd would say he doesn't understand. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't appear to understand social graces, for example. Right. Uh, he doesn't understand that he's blind. <laughs> he doesn't understand. Uh, but what he does understand is, one, that Jesus of Nazareth, that he is the son of David. Right. He understands that messianic promise. He understands that Jesus can actually have mercy on him, which is what he, what he needed. And he, he, he didn't even ask to recover his sight until Jesus asked him. He just said, have mercy on me. Right. Have mercy on me. And the more they, they just said, no, no, no. Right. The more they tried to explain to this guy, you know, you don't understand what's going on. You're, here. you're being irrational. <laughs> right. He understood and he held to, to the promise of who the Messiah actually was and what he could do. And I, I do think Luke does that on purpose of putting one right after the other. The disciples okay. who do not understand, and yet you find this blind man who cannot rely on his own sight. He has to rely on what people tell him. Right. He has to rely on what he heard, um, and uh, he what the, what it meant to be the son of David. He understood that this Jesus of Nazareth could have mercy, and yeah. did have mercy. And he understood the 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 mercy of of God that he would that the nature of God was to have mercy. And then Jesus said, "Your faith has made you well." Jesus comments on this faith. Where he did yeah. not lean on how he understood things, how things worked, uh, he knew at that point that every effort to keep make him see didn't work. Hmm. Nothing worked. I'm sure he tried everything. Nothing worked to give him sight. But yet he understood that there is this Jesus of Nazareth passing by, the Son of David, who has mercy. Hmm. And he can do something about my condition. That's, that's a faith. and that's a lot of insight for somebody who doesn't have physical sight. Right. <laughs> For anybody, really. So it really, um, and, and, and I think that's a, that's a good way to enter into Lent now. Hmm. Is, uh, you know, we don't understand why we have to go through that darker time. Uh. We may not understand why we need to put away the hallelujahs. Perhaps if we understood our sins a little better. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, nonetheless, we, we need that. Right, and so we go through Lent as a, maybe a way to try to to attempt in our own feeble ways to see our sins the way God sees them. And, and to see God's mercy. Okay. Right? And uh, um, not, I, I wouldn't say it's a dark time and like we're supposed to be wallowing about them and that okay. kind of thing. Yeah, uh, that's fair. I, I would say maybe just with an in, more of an intensity being buried with Christ and raised with him. Well, it's called a penitential season, so maybe I've put my own meaning on that. What do you think that means when it's a penitential season? Um, I would say, you know, that you have times in, in the Bible where it is a penit penitential season, but there's almost a joyous urgency to that. Hmm, okay. You know, repent while he may be found. Perhaps he will have mercy. Oh, yeah, yeah. There there. Are, it's one thing to just repent and wallow in, in your sins, hmm. but it's quite another to know that you have someone who hears your cries of mercy, who hears and responds with mercy, that you have someone to repent to and hmm. has the authority to forgive you of your sins and to give you life. And so it, it's, it's a joy. It's, it, you know, it's like being hungry and uh, knowing that you have Fairway Grocery Store like four blocks away. <laughs> How much do I need food? Well, uh, I, I can rush to Fairway and go to that beautiful meat counter <laughs> right. and be satisfied. So there is that aspect of repentance where 
it's not just repentance for repentance sake. Hmm. You have a God to whom you repent, and you have a Lord Jesus who does have mercy, and you have a Lord Jesus who promises your sins are in his wounds, that he is hmm. your resurrection and life. So it's not just a sorrowful repentance where without hope. Right. That, that all is included. And so um, it's, I'm not saying that repentance is fun, and certainly we spend time using God's law as a mirror and, and to mourn over our sins, but it's not a, a hopeless uh, that in a way. It's yeah. you're, you're doing it because well, Christ hears hears me. He's going to do something about it. It's not despair, right? Right. Do you see the difference? There? I do see the difference there. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking like if you were going back to the hunger thing, if it would be utterly miserable to be hungry and have no hope whatsoever that there was food. But it's completely different to have that kind of, I'm hungry, but it's because I'm having a buffet later today, and, I, and I'm looking forward to the buffet, you know? Right. But but there is that aspect of Lent, though, too, of fasting, like the way why we're using hunger, because, hmm. you know, you go without a day, a day without food, and you just realize how dependent you are on God, how weak we actually are, I, you know? I've gone, you go throughout without just breakfast and lunch and afternoon you're dragging. You're like, yeah. like, how frail life is and how frail we are. Um, there is that aspect too, hmm. you know, when you think of hunger. Uh, but that's just looking at it clearly. Hmm. How about a book? Okay, here comes a book out of the random pile of potential discards. And I'm a witness that he did not look. He grabbed one at random. All right. This one is entitled Confirmation and First Communion. Hmm. That might be Lutheran. Yeah. Although interesting, there's some debate, I would say, over whether children ought to wait for confirmation to have communion. I'll have to look at this because the thing is, I'm looking at it. It's an Augsburg publishing house. Okay. Uh... So I'll have to look at this. This is on my... This is a potential keeper? Yes. We... Uh, maybe put it on... I'm going to put it on a different pile for further investigation. The further investigation pile. Now, we have a discard pile on the floor, I think, of... Uh, we have God Guide Post 92. We have fun group discussions for children's ministry. Oh, yeah. That That's on the cutting floor. And bouncing back, handling humor and heartaches of frustration. <laughs> right. Yeah, and... Uh, because of our recording mishap, I don't remember which one of those we talked about right. and which ones were talked about during the recording mishap. So we'll just, we're going to just yeah. go forward instead of trying to recap. All right, one more book here. Okay, here comes another book out of the random pile. Right. We're not potential bat- keep. Uh, this is uh, Christ in Your Home, Volume Two: Devotions for Every Day of the Year. Mm, do you see a publisher on there? Is it? Uh, yes, this is another Augsburg Fortress. Okay. Mm. Actually, I don't know if they're affiliated with a denomination other than Lutheranism in general. Do you know if Augsburg Fortress is affiliated strongly with a particular denomination? I always thought it was. But, uh, um, I'll put that on. Is that a further review one? Here's the thing. Part of it is to, uh... How much are people using this book? Well, that's very like difficult. Like if, if to we know. could replace it with something. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to put it on the. Well, it seems like most people use the devotionals that are the periodical ones that come out. Right. Right now. Right. So, to, yeah. To, yeah. All right. Um, you have a top 12 list. I do. Um, it's might, might be too stupid for words. <laughs> like, oh, I love your confidence. <laughs> I'll, I'll be the, I'll, here, just, we'll just do your list. Okay. Right? And uh, if it's, I'll let you know if it's too stupid. All right. Well, um, so <laughs> what I have here, uh, this is specifically for guys who may have forgotten that it was Valentine's Day earlier uh, this past week. So is that a, an, a is this something that you actually went through? <laughs> it's not, um, this isn't confession time. <laughs> it's, no, we, uh, we made a deal that that we would officially celebrate Valentine's Day a week offset because we had travel plans. And uh, and if you try to get into like a good restaurant on Valentine's Day, it's just going to be totally st- stacked full. So right. nevertheless, I feel like somebody out there probably, and I'm talking about the guys, probably forgot. But I think I've got the solution here for you to make everything right uh, with your woman. Because this is a way you can mansplain to her how 
you suffer more than she does because this is the top 12 minor maladies that are probably worse than childbirth. Okay, so uh, uh, I want uh, <laughs> I want uh, our associate producer, Hannah, right. to comment on this. This will be helpful because... Uh, uh, a mother yeah. who, uh, I think she gave birth in a car. Ooh, did she? Yeah. <laughs> So it must not be that hard, right? It's something you can do oh, no. in a car. So oh, this no. helps prove my point. <laughs> uh, send your your uh, your uh, email to... Uh... Yes, feedback at clericalerrors.org or find us on Facebook by searching for Clerical Errors Podcast. And on Twitter, we have the handle at Clerical Errors P. And, and if it's really, if you're really angry, uh, go to patrick.org. <laughs> Patrick.cox at ctsfw.edu. <laughs> for the, but nobody should be angry because I'm going to fix all your problems because you can just explain to your woman that you have your it worse woman. than oh, she. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, I, you, okay, use I'm my words. I'm going to find one book that you might, I might have to assign <laughs> to you. I might need a devotional. Right. <laughs> Especially after I give my top 12. All right. <laughs> all right, ready? Number 12. Eating pizza that's too hot. I mean, because what a devastating effect that has on your taste buds and that skin on the roof of your mouth starts kind of hanging down after a while and uh, pretty intense. And I'm, I'm pretty sure. So, so what does this have to do with, with Valentine's Day? So, Well, because we're going to sh- explain that even though your woman suffered through you forgetting Valentine's Day, you actually have it far worse than she does all the time. So once you explain this, the, the fact that you forgot Valentine's Day will just dwindle in comparison and it won't be an issue anymore. Okay, <laughs> so you don't you don't let your uh, your wife eat pizza like you're the only one who burns. Well, I she's she doesn't happen to make that mistake, I guess. Whereas you know oh. I get too eager and you know, but she doesn't have to live life as a man who wants to eat pizza right now, no matter what. You know. Okay. So she doesn't she doesn't understand until I explain it. All right. <laughs> These are pure simple. I, I find ones. myself with the disciples. <laughs> I know. I told you it was too stupid for words, didn't I? And, and, and that meant, <laughs> all right, truth be told, he said, this is really stupid. Yeah. And I said, oh, great, we're keeping it. <laughs> Number 11. A noogie. When, you know, the bully at school grabs you around the neck with his arm and he rubs the knuckles on your scalp. Yeah. Yeah, you know, those, that's pretty intense, kind of an embarrassing situation. Uh, I don't think that uh, women can truly understand how painful that was to uh, to young men growing up. So. Like, like again, they didn't get nuggies? No, not that I know of. Not the kind that the boys gave each other, at least. And, and they can't understand until until I explain it right now. Oh. This is certainly far worse than childbirth. Okay. Well, it's, it's interesting because I, I probably was the one doling them out rather than receiving them. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Maybe it's a good thing we didn't go to the same school. <laughs> I mean, but I would have been older than you by a couple of years, so maybe I. Well, that's true. Maybe I could have handled it back then. <laughs> <laughs> not, not as, not as. A, it's not like an Indian bird, though. Is that on your list? It's, it's not. There's some related things, but I picked one bullying oh. action, and maybe I could have used more. But all, all right. right, all right, all right. Uh, number ten. ten of Vicar digging himself a hole. Number ten. A pimple under your nostril. I mean, it's in that hard to get place and you, and you try to get to it and you almost have to, you know, shuffle your nose off to the side of your face to get to it, which hurts. And you almost have to live with it. The pain just, you know, you can't really do anything about it without making the pain worse. So, All right. I'm pretty sure women don't understand about that either because they they have perfect skin just kind of automatically. Every time you see women out in public, they look, they look great. So I assume that they just wake up that way. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to turn that one theological somehow? <laughs> um, even I cannot do that. I've befuddled you. It's great. Number nine. A skinned knee. I, I remember this time in PE class when we were playing. Uh, it was in Oregon, so it was raining because that's just how it is for nine months of the year. So we were playing like a, some analog of baseball indoors in the gym. And I was running for a base and on the gym floor... And I decided to slide into the base. And so I had shorts on and I slid on my bare skin on the gym floor into that base. And there was a really high pitched squealing noise, which was the sound of the skin peeling off my leg. Um, And I don't think that uh, any woman could ever understand that sensation. Uh, And so this is yet again, Mm. another malady that's probably worse than childbirth. See, if if I, 
See, we had different childhoods. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because, like, if I didn't have a skid knee, that usually meant that I wasn't playing hard enough or having enough fun. Oh, okay. Like, my legs were... Were, like, skinless? <laughs> right. I, I, like, knees always had something. I, I just got scars from making jumping bad ramps. Oh, well, and, yeah. We would we would make ramps out of plywood and firewood, and, um, yeah, I certainly wrecked my bike enough times to also skin my knee. But, <laughs> but, uh, but, but in your mind, you, you think that's probably worse than childbirth. Yeah. I mean that, that high pitched squealing sound of my skin peeling off my, my, mm-hmm. my knee there just stuck in my head forever, like a nightmare. So I'm pretty sure that's worse than childbirth. All right. <laughs> I mean, see, and you guys, <laughs> if you use these examples and mansplain them enough, you will be forgiven for forgetting Valentine's day. That's how it works. All right. All right. How, how, how's that worked out for you so far? Well, you know, I'm going to find out later today. <laughs> In fact, I'll, I'll probably, just to save time, just instruct Mrs. Vicker to just listen to the podcast, you know. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. And I'll wonder um, why you're sleeping in your office. But... Yeah. It would be unrelated. It's because Lent's coming up and sacrifice and all that. <laughs> you're giving some things up for Lent. Huh? I can see. <laughs> <laughs> see how that's going to work. <laughs> yeah, this is all on purpose. <laughs> Number eight, a sore throat. I mean, we use our voices all day and we eat food. And so our our throat is constantly in action. So once you have a sore throat, it it impacts your entire life. And And, and and once again, women don't get those. uh, As you know, as much as they keep talking continuously, I, I don't think they do because it seems like they just, they must not get the same way that guys get it. That's what I'm thinking. So Everyone remember, this is Vicar's List. <laughs> well, you see, because childbirth is like this one-time event, or maybe multiple, but but it's an event, and then it's over, whereas the sore throat persists, you know, for a period of days. So clearly it's mm. it's worse than childbirth. It's not, it's not over. It's not. For them, no. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm right. <laughs> I mean, I, did, I spent some time thinking about this, like whole minutes, and I think I'm right. Oh, well. This is this is a good lesson on why the pastor needs to look over the vicar's sermons. <laughs> That's true. And I was thinking of using all these as anecdotes to make my sermons more interesting for people. Oh, yes, please do. Yeah, that's what people want, right? Like funny stories mixed into the sermon. Definitely. <laughs> Number 7. Eyelash in the eye. I mean the irony of it. Like the the eyelash is supposed to protect you from getting things in your eye, like a husband's supposed to protect his wife. Yeah, like that. Yeah, so so yeah, you're you're with me now. So if you could explain carefully about how much men suffer, then she will decide that the forgetfulness of Thanksgiving Day is just no big thing in comparison. So okay, yeah. So eyelash in the eye, uh, you just can't do anything about it. The the eyelash has ironically become the problem. Number six, a sunburn. Yep. I mean, what what kid hasn't like uh, gone to the swimming pool? And played all day out in the sun and then found out that he was sunburned. Yeah, then again, that, that, that's where I, you know, it was a good day if I had a sunburn. That means I was outside all day. <laughs> yeah, you'd probably come up with a different list than me. Right. Like I would have like uh, muscle fibers tearing from benching 350 pounds. Yeah, right. Um, let me see if that's later on my list. Um, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, severe sunburns. You know, I lived in California for a while when I was a kid, and so it was kind of a, you know, it's just. But can I guess what's else, well, what else is on your Yeah, list? go Maybe for a, it. a sore wrist from too many video games? Uh, you know, very close. In fact, number five. Sore thumbs from a game controller. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, because you're right. Like, uh, only uh, the cruelty of being a guy could hand to you uh, a mandatory hobby in which you develop soreness. Right. That's that's a guy thing. I'm pretty sure. So women certainly couldn't understand that, that we have to play these games. We have to. It's part of our culture and they cause injuries. (laughs) Angry birds. Really? I have to play angry birds. (laughs) You you have to. (laughs) Yeah. And so we put in the long hours, you know, fulfilling our obligations to our culture, playing video games, and it makes us injured. And so once you carefully explain that to your woman, she will then understand why you definitely have it worse than she does, especially in light of something really minor, like just forgetting Valentine's Day. I mean, it just pales in comparison. Right. All right. (laughs) 
All right. By the way, you know what's interesting about this? What? Is uh, uh, my wife, uh, we just celebrated a son's birthday on the 13th. Oh, okay. Ooh. So she, we spent one uh, Valentine's Day where she was recovering from having a child. Oh, but as I just explained, that's simply an event. And so by the next day, there's no childbirth the next day. That was the day before. It's in the past. See, that's how it works. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so then I should just uh, should have expect, expected the sandwich to appear again. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the way that works because the, the, what's in the past stays in the past. Not like a sunburn that keeps going with you and over or a sore throat and you know, all these important things I'm talking about. Uh... <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, I got the... This is Vickers' list. Yep, Vickers' list. Top 12 minor maladies that are almost certainly worse than childbirth. Which, and you skip in, I still don't follow the concept, but I'll stick with it. Okay. So when you forget Valentine's Day... Right. Then... And they say, well... You have hurt me more than whatever. Yeah, they start... The woman starts complaining that she has been injured by your forgetfulness... Then you could whip out my top twelve list and explain All to right. her carefully All that right. you. I'm gonna have you sit down on the therapy couch for a minute, Victor. Okay. Because if she's that upset about being forgetting Valentine's Day, mm-hmm. there's probably a bigger issue that you've probably done. You know, the greatest thing that you've ever done to harm your wife is probably not forgetting Valentine's Day. Well, that's not the way she sees it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, let's get this list over with. Okay, uh, number four. Well, while we still have someone listening. Number four. A face slap. Mm. Ugh. Being slapped in the face, the, the the social indignation of it, the stinging pain, the, the horrific memory and psychological damage of a face slap, uh, incomparable. Um, so, so definitely pull that one out if you got to explain why you really do have it worse than your woman. You know, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm a gentleman. I don't know if I've ever been slapped in the face. Well, that might make for an interesting podcast episode sometime. We could, you know, practice face slapping. We could do have like a, a, a face slapping competition like yeah. in Russia. Right. Right. We'll wind way up and slap each other and see like who gives up first. Um, but I want to go first and then give up. Number three. A paper cut. Ugh. I worked in an office and I suffered this probably weekly, reaching for a stack of papers, and it would go up underneath my thumbnail, slice underneath my thumbnail. Mm. And I, I don't know, and the blood would well up, and, and then I would just have to squeeze it really hard with my other hand and squeeze my eyes shut and and just... Um, That's a rough life. Yeah, I was kind of hoping for unconsciousness so that the pain could just go away, uh, but it, it didn't come. There was no mercy. So did you have to do like 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 breathing technique to help you get through it or well yeah breathing technique and i'd shut my office door so you have to have someone come and hold your hand and say you're doing great patrick yeah i needed affirmation and stuff like to to let me know that the my life still had meaning even though i had suffered this totally pointless paper cut for no reason whatsoever and even though i picked up the paper the same way every time uh this time gave me a paper cut um really off-putting kind of ruined the day so um definitely one of those office struggles that i don't think women could understand all right. <laughs> you, this number one better be quite painful. Well, I'm on number two so far. Okay. Number two. The stubbed toe on the furniture at night. It's it. Well, I like, can't imagine your toes being very long. <laughs> I don't know why you don't. <laughs> let me have to think about that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What do you wear? Like a size nine? Oh no, these are seven. Okay. I size seven. That's, That's what I was getting at. Okay. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say, like, the nice thing about having size seven shoes is that when shoes go on deep discount, it's because they only have the leftovers and all the good sizes have already been snagged up and they're just trying right. to blow out the last. Well, I always have my size still all right. available. All right. Pause. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to do a top 12 list right off the top of my head. The top 12 blessings of having size seven shoes. Okay. Number 12. You can buy shoes with lights on them. <laughs> That's probably true. Number 11. You can buy shoes without shoelaces. <laughs> Easy tie shoes. Yeah. Velcro, maybe. Yeah. You know, my sister, when she was uh, in first grade, wore a size five. <laughs> no. Number 10. I'm running, I guess. Okay. I'll tell you what. At a crime scene one time where uh, somebody had snuck into the my workplace and stole 
some items. There were footprints. And I walked next to them to go check out where they had thrown the stuff over the fence. And later the police came and I was able to say, you see those itty bitty footprints? Those are mine. And I'm not the bad guy. <laughs> All right. So I have a question. Yeah. Are your feet about the same size as deer prints? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> Inside joke. <laughs> uh, why, no. They're <laughs> different than that. Okay. <laughs> Number one. Number one. And... Number one. Leg cramp. Ugh. Leg cramps. They get me right out of bed in the middle of the night, disrupting my beauty sleep. And uh, and I have to put all my weight on the leg with the cramp. And I got a whole rigmarole. And then I'm awake. And, and it's hard to go back to sleep. And it's so intense. And unlike childbirth, where you just go have a baby and then you're done because you've had the baby, the leg cramps come back repeatedly a day after day or week after week. And so it's got to be worse than childbirth because it's not like you just go have the baby and you're done it's different it keeps coming back all right so can i uh this is a a religious pod a christian podcast that's true can right? i address your list in a couple of ways i hope you can okay first uh i want to remind you that uh jesus when he describes the end of the world he uses birth pains this is going to be a problem for me yes <laughs> Yes. So. Are you sure it didn't say leg cramps? I'm pretty sure, yes. Okay. So when, when, when Jesus had to describe, even to men, okay. Okay. Who uh, didn't always understand. At least they have the, the, the self-awareness to say, oh, yeah, that, that's pretty bad. Like the end of the mm. world is like birth pains. Okay, that's fair. Okay. Yeah. That, that knocks me down a peg, for sure. Okay. Uh, and also, it, one of the first things that Jesus talks about, the consequences of the fall, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Which perfectly relates to your top 12 list. Okay? Yeah. One is, he says to the woman, your desire will be for your husband. Right? Right. So somehow, she's going to want to be married to something like you. <laughs> That is a mystery. One of those right. things that even with plain words, you can't understand. Right. It. So when he basically the, the the like the one of the great punishments of the fall is is you'll want to be married to this guy, mm. and then you'll be childbirth will be very painful. So mm. so you're really in a way in your top twelve list, Vicar, arguing with God's word. Uh, well, I didn't like it, so I decided not to understand it and to put it more in the way I would write it. Okay. Yeah, I mean that's what you do, right? You bet. <laughs> I need another book. Yeah, random book time. Uh, Fishing around. I got to admit, he's kind of cheating. I think he's using his eyes this time. Oh, he's looking away. He's looking away, reaching in, pulling out a book. It's kind of blue looking. It's wrestling with the box a bit. Oh, all right. The box is down. Um, this is for the listener to all our... our um, I can... I will probably... If if the, the the best angry email will get this copy, okay. we will mail it to yeah. them. The best angry email. It's called uh, "Good and Angry: How to Handle Your Anger Positively." Oh yeah, yeah. I so, think so, I might have to give that to uh, Mrs. Vicker. Uh, no, we're gonna give it to the. She has to email. Oh okay. Because there might be other people who are who are good and angry. Okay. So they can handle that. Um. Uh, I don't. I really don't think that this is going to stay in our our library. So we can give it to a deserving yes. person who's very angry about the podcast today for just mysterious reasons. Yes. Probably something Bullhagen said earlier, I imagine. Well, I think Peter's going to be angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might be Peter that gets it yeah, when he's trying to weld together our disjointed recording. Uh, and uh, this is a book entitled Prop Up the Lean Inside. Not Leaning. Leaning. Uh, leanin'. That makes it all down homey so that, you know, it relates to the common man, the lean inside, you know, like in the modern world when you're always propping up the lean inside. Uh, <laughs> I should have done this 20 years ago. Oh. All right. I, I'm done. All right. Are you done? No, that, that was my whole list of uh, top 12 minor maladies that are certainly worse than childbirth. All right. Where where can they get a hold of? We already did that, didn't we? We, we did the get a hold of us stuff, but right. I did I didn't mention that we have a store and a Patreon, which you can find on our website. Okay, 
And uh, I think we'll end it here. Yeah. We're so- we're sorry, Peter. We'll do better next time. Yeah. You know, but may your maladies be, you know, lesser than childbirth. Thank you for joining us. This podcast is available on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever else you get your podcasts. Questions, thoughts, concerns? You can contact us on Facebook at facebook.com slash clerical heirs podcast. On Twitter at clerical heirs P for podcast or email us at feedback at clerical Thanks for listening to Clerical Heirs. See you next time.